This is breaking news. Police Commissioner Keyshawn Sewell and other NYPD leaders are making a law enforcement announcement at one police plaza. Let's go to that now. Today we are announcing the arrest of a 22-year-old Queens man who was shooting a NYPD officer earlier this week on Wednesday. That officer, your NYPD officer, is also 22 years old and has been on patrol and serving the workers for just three months. Thankfully, he continues to recover this morning. The man who shot him immediately ran away and removed some of his outer clothing in an attempt to change his appearance. Not Less than 30 hours after the shooting, he was tracked down to the Bronx and arrested. He will now be held to account. I want to commend as well as thank for their swift professional work, their truly extraordinary officers and detectives from the 103 precinct, their NYPD colleagues in our detective bureau, our force investigation division, and every investigator who had a hand in this apprehension especially the U.S. Marshals Regional Future Task Force, comprised of members from the NYPD and our many law enforcement partners. This was a job extremely well done. At this hour, the subject remains in NYPD custody and is expected to be charged at the end of the day. New Yorkers, we are in this together, every day and night. And I want to thank the public for the information they have provided to assist in this investigation. Chief of Detective James Essick, and I'll provide the details about this investigation that we have to Chief, just hang on a second. We're just going to fix the sound. There we go. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> so on Wednesday, April 5th, at 3.20 p.m., in front of 9023 161st Street, a police officer was shot in the leg after a brief foot pursuit which stemmed from a dispute over a seat on an MTA bus. The perpetrator fled into a nearby parking garage where he removed his black jacket, orange sweatshirt, and a black mask. He was last seen on video at 161st Street and Hillside Avenue wearing a white t-shirt and black pants. Investigation into the shooting was multifaceted and included video tracking, vehicle identification, social media work, computer work, electronic surveillance, and investigative interviews. After the incident, video tracks the shooter to the, to the parking garage and then to 161st Street and Hillside Avenue. At that location, we observed a black Nissan pick up, a shoot, pick up our shooter. Detectives were able to ID that auto as a lift for hire vehicle. They were able to ascertain that that auto discharged our shooter at 215th Street and 102nd Avenue. Additional video shows our perpetrator enter 10216 215th Street, a private residence. Computer workups on that residence revealed persons who had social media accounts. Detectives were able to quickly to identify a possible match to our shooter. A search warrant was obtained from the Queens District Attorney's Office and executed at that location at 7 p.m. last night. Recovered were sneakers we believe were worn by our subject. Although our perpetrator was not present, detectives were able to garnish significant leads which quickly led them to 4578 Bronx Boulevard in the Bronx. At 9 p.m., Members of the regional task force arrived at the location and quickly and without incident took into custody a Devin Spragans, male, 22 years old, with a date of birth of 10-13-2000. He gives an address of 170-0293rd Avenue in Queens, but his address is also 4578 Bronx Boulevard. He is being charged with attempted murder of a police officer in the first degree, criminal possession of a weapon, a loaded firearm in the second degree, and obstructing governmental administration. Recovered at that address is a 9 millimeter handgun. Uh, just for information, a 9 millimeter shell casing was recovered at the original scene and a 9 millimeter magazine was recovered at that scene. 
uh, forensics will see if the ballistics matches the gun. I just want to thank everybody involved, particularly with me up here today, is Chief Mike Kletzel from the Fugitive, Fugitive Enforcement Division, the Regional Task Force, Lieutenant Steve Farber from the 103 Precinct Detective Squad who chaired this investigation, the 103rd Detective Squad, Queen South Homicide, the Gun Violence Suppression Division, our social media research team, and our force investigation unit with Inspector Anthony Marino. Uh, I'd like to also thank Melinda Katz from the Queens District Attorney's Office and everyone who helped solve this case. There's too many persons to mention. Uh, I spoke with Inspector Don Bola last night. He and his family were very relieved and grateful. But being a member of the Det Detective Bureau, he, uh, he was not surprised at the swiftness of the arrest. Uh, now we turn our attention uh, to the speedy recovery of his son, Brett. So with that, we we'll take some questions. I don't know. The suspect who doesn't have an extensive criminal history, um, juvenile um, defenses, you sort of figured out what's going on here, what, you know, what leads him to be carrying a gun on a city bus? Yeah, uh, I mean, that's, uh, that's a question uh, we've asked. Uh, we look into, he doesn't, he's not known to us. He, you know, we know he's a transient from what he talks about. He bounces around from here to here. He has some uh, connections up to Poughkeepsie and to Georgia, but uh, no record in New York. Yes? How did the arrest actually happen? Who answered the door? Uh, what was said? If anything, by him, or was uh, taken into custody? And, and can you provide his record? Well, I, he, he does not have an arrest record. He, he, yeah, he, do, he doesn't have an arrest record that we, we can speak of. Mike, you want to talk about uh, Mike Kletzel from the Fugitive Enforcement Division? Right. So when we went up to the address up in the Bronx, the Marshals Task Force and my NYPD detectives took charge of the scene. We gave him verbal commands, ordered him out of the, of the uh, house. We removed three people, and he came out without any incidents. Associates. Associates? In both cases. Yeah. So I think his father was taken in to the test, so he was sort of uh, at the precinct. Uh, I think he went to the hospital or something like that. Do you know anything right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no. Yeah. I'll take care of that in some mm -hmm. else. Anybody else? Okay. Chief, can you spell his name in full? And could you better describe the, uh, the actual uh, incident on the bus? Who wanted to see who was in the seat? On, uh, on the bus, we have a, a, a male sitting on the bus. Just uh, he, he, exit, he enters the bus, uh, we believe, at 160th Street in Parsons, one block away. He gets on the bus. He says to the, the male sitting there, why are you staring at me? Get out of my seat. There's some pushing, some altercations. As the bus is proceeding, that's when the bus driver sees our officers on the street, flags them down, and that's when the incident then takes place. His last name, the spelling of his last name is S-P-R-A-G-G-I-N-S. Devin, D-E-V-I-N is his first name. Uh, that was just an interview as a witness to, to, to what was going on. You know, talking to people from 215th Street who were at the location, he says he bounces in and then he bounces out. We see him from time to time. Last one. Chief Essig, or if someone else wants to speak, when you hear about an officer being shot and this is a new officer, just what's your own personal reaction? You all have been through this, sadly, but, you know, this one had a different ending. You know, just talk about your own reaction when you heard, you know, one of your guys had been shot. Did you find anything else? Uh, you know, the, probably the most difficult and 
tension, your, your, your adrenaline just rushes and your, the, the anxiety when you hear police officer shot any police officer shot, and especially a, a, a new rookie police officer, someone who father I've worked with for 15 years, uh, uh, knowing his son was out there doing the job and getting shot. I think every police officer just feels that rush uh, to, to get out there and help and do what they can. And in this case, uh, particularly the, um, the amazing work the Detective Bureau did and, and with the uh, force investigation, to put this together in a short time. But uh, this, it's very difficult to, to describe an incident where you hear officer shot, and there's just so many emotions that go through you when that happens. Thank you very much.